Good evening, and it's great to have you with us tonight as we begin another week together, another week in America, and tonight, of course, the newest test for this country, how and when to reopen. The president moments ago, aware of the pressure to ramp up testing to give Americans some reassurance before going back to work, back into the community, the president calling on several private companies. They then talked about how they're ready to increase testing in the coming weeks. He also talked about trying to reopen schools in part of this country before the end of the school year, what the president just said about that. And of course, all of this as we mark nearly 56,000 lives lost in this country, nearly 5,000 more lives just since Friday. In hard hit New York tonight, the last patient seen leaving the Navy hospital ship, the Comfort, but the state is still registering 1,000 new COVID patients entering the hospital every day. Massachusetts still at the peak of this outbreak, the state ramping up testing for first responders and for nursing home residents and staff. And there are the scenes across the country of businesses beginning to reopen in Georgia, Waffle House for one, welcoming customers again. Tennessee doing the same inside what social distancing looks like, a waitress in a face mask, a table with blue tape there where you're not allowed to sit. But of course, there will be many questions along the way. That image I showed you in the headlines there, the scene on this flight, nearly full from New York to Charlotte, little room to social distance, though we saw many masks there. And can you really avoid this if you have to fly with so few flights? And then that major concern tonight over the food supply. One major meat producer saying, quote, the food supply chain is breaking. So what will that mean at the grocery store and how much will you have to pay? We have a lot to guide you through on a Monday night and we begin here with ABC's Tom Yamas right here in New York. As restaurants in Georgia open for business and talk in Washington turns to reopening, at the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak, the battle is far from over. Number of new cases, still 1,000 new COVID cases every day. Puts it in perspective. In Manhattan, Ruth Caballero of the Visiting Nurse Service boards a city bus, heading to the new front line of this fight. I'm the nurse that spoke to you this morning. We're outside. She suits up, gown, mask, gloves. I'm now going to see a COVID positive patient that was discharged from the hospital yesterday. For the patient she sees, leaving the hospital is just the first step. They're weak and emotionally they are afraid. They're afraid that they're going to die. They're afraid that they sent them home to die. In the hospitals they leave behind, the work never stops, taking a profound toll on the doctors and nurses witnessing so much pain. Tonight, the New York Times reporting the medical director of the emergency department at New York Presbyterian Allen Hospital, Dr. Lorna Breen, dying by suicide. Dr. Breen had contracted the virus herself, recovered, and gone back to work. Her father telling the Times, make sure she's praised as a hero, because she was. Tonight, anguish from her friend, Dr. Debbie Yee Maddock. I originally felt sad, and now I just feel devastated with all these people who are asking for lockdown to end what about us we didn't sign up for this and in new york today governor andrew cuomo urging residents to stay at home so any gains aren't lost may 15th is when the pause regulations uh, expire statewide i will extend them in many parts of the state. In other parts of the country, the virus still raging. Massachusetts now seeing its surge plateau. The governor announcing nearly 2,900 people have died, a staggering 56% of them in nursing homes. The numbers are tough to comprehend, but they illustrate the lethal grip COVID-19 can have on seniors. But in one hard hit state, a reason to cheer. For the first time in 36 days, no one in New Orleans died of COVID-19. Parts of the South now planning to reopen. Restaurants in Tennessee and Georgia started welcoming customers today. Stephen Leslie's restaurant, Roasters, has been open for 30 years. Today, supplies rolling into the kitchen. I'm kind of excited because these are my family. I get emotional. <laughs> But, you know, these guys need work. They need to make money. Texas restaurants, museums, libraries, and malls now allowed to open their doors on Friday at 25% capacity. In Ohio, manufacturing and construction can resume next week. Some offices can open, too, with reduced staff, masks, and health checks. I think we've found the sweet spot, but uh, it's, it's a risk. Health officials warn Americans should still practice social distancing. But over the weekend, crowds flocked to California's beaches. This virus doesn't go home. 
uh, because it's a beautiful sunny day uh, around our coasts. But today, President Trump sending a different message on a call with governors, urging them to seriously consider reopening the nation's schools. And as states reopen, the president is under pressure to step up testing. Today, he brought business leaders to the White House. The testing that's been developed and, and being developed right now has been truly an amazing thing. All right, so let's get to Tom Yamas again with us tonight. And Tom, we heard the president there moments ago talking about testing, several private labs announcing they're ramping up the testing. The president knows he's under pressure here to reassure Americans that there will be the tests available to try to rejoin society. But I also took note that he talked about uh, opening schools across this country in some parts of this country and, and trying to do so perhaps before the end of this school year. He did, David. You know, the president pointed out the school year is almost over, but he said several schools could open for a short period of time, but he didn't say exactly where. He also added that young people seem to do well with this virus, but early on, a doctor explained to me the big fear with coronavirus in children is not them getting infected. The big fear, David, is them coming home and then infecting their parents and their grandparents. Yes, David. because oftentimes they're asymptomatic. All right, Tom Yamas, great to have you leading us off again tonight. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.